Okay, so asses and bases. Uh, normally, if we were in class, I would ask people to raise their hands and tell me everything you know about acids and everything you know about bases. Um, we can't do that, but some things that generally come up. Um, people will tell me that acids have a pH, um, they'll say less than 7 normally. Um, acids have a pH anywhere from 0 to 6.99 really right up until seven. Um, bases will have a pH above seven, so 7.01, all the way up to 14. Um, and then right at seven, you'll notice seven is missing. Seven is what we would consider something that's neutral. Um, we'll come back to that in a second. Acids tend to be like sour. Um, a lot of examples are things like that are citrus like lemon juice is an acid people know. People know that um, you have stomach acid, um, which is hydrochloric acid, that's acidic. Um, vinegar is also acidic. Uh, whereas bases tend to be bitter. They tend to be slippery. Um, if you get base on your skin, you would feel it kind of be kind of soapy, whereas acid would just feel like water on your skin. Um, but so that helps us know that often like soaps, detergents, etc., are normally basic. Um, milk is a classic example of something basic. So something I like to talk about is that something being an acid or something being a base doesn't automatically make it dangerous or scary. Um, you eat citrus fruits all the time, you work with vinegar, you have milk, you touch soap. An acid or a base getting on you, it's not like you're going to magically all of a sudden start melting, um, like what you picture in a movie. Um, really, it's the strength or the concentration of that acid and what type that can then make it um, corrosive or something that can burn you. Um, acids and bases both can have those effects on people. Um, so that's a little bit of background. Um, pH is a measurement of how much hydrogen ions is in a solution. So the P just tells us what we're going to do mathematically, um, and the H tells us how much H plus hydrogen ions are in a solution. Um, so neutral is a pH of 7. Water is a classic example of something that's neutral, but it's not the only neutral substance out there. Um, to have a pH of 7, it's not that there's no hydrogen ions, hydrogen ions in the solution. Um, it's when our concentration, so the brackets mean concentration, when our concentration of hydrogen ions is equal to our concentration of hydroxide ions. So again, water is 7, water is H2O, or HOH. When we have equal parts H to OH, they cancel each other out, and we end up with a neutral pH. We get a smaller number for pH, um, right, less than 7, if we actually have more H plus than OH minus. And that's because of the math we're going to do to get to, H, to, to pH. Um, it's a log scale, so the numbers feel a little bit backwards. A low pH means we have more H than OH. A high pH means we have more OH than H. So something I'm often thinking about is H and OH. If they come together and balance out, it's like water is neutral. If I have more of one than the other, some H and OH would cancel out. Some H and OH would cancel out. But then I have some extra H plus, then it's going to be acidic. Or if I had extra OH minus, some H and OH would cancel out, cancel out, cancel out, until we're left with just some OH, it would be basic. Um, all solutions that were, all, all solutions here are going to have H and OH. It's just neutral when they're equal. Um, so for any solution, we can calculate its pH. We can look at the concentration of hydrogen ions or of hydroxide ions. Um, everything has both. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write up all of the formulas for you. You'll want to write them down somewhere where you can access them. Okay, these are my formulas um, that you'll definitely want to write down. Um, so pause here and do that if you haven't. Uh, and it looks like a lot. You'll all, you would always be given these formulas. Obviously everything is open note right now anyways. Um, but knowing how to use them is important. 
So any solution can have H, can have OH. We can measure its pH by looking at how much hydrogen there is. Or we can measure its pOH by looking at how much hydroxide there is. Um, two different scales, pH scale or the pOH scale. When you're thinking acids are less than 7, bases are more than 7, you're thinking about pH. So acids and bases both have H. Acids and bases both have OH. Use the pH scale if you're trying to decide if something is acidic or basic. Um, so what I can do is I can give you any value. Let's say I told you something had a pH of 7.7. .7. And from that pH, I could ask you to find the hydroxide concentration. So given that I have a pH of 7.7, .7, I want to look at places where I could possibly plug pH in. Now, some people see, oh, I want hydroxide, so I'm going to plug in here. I do want hydroxide, but I don't have pOH. I have the pH. This does not say pH. This says pOH, so I can't plug in here. Um, I could plug my pH in here, and that would find me my hydrogen, which I could then plug in there to find my hydroxide. That's one way. That's not my preferred way. I actually, personally, I don't like this formula so much. I prefer this formula. Um, so anytime I have a pH or a pOH, I can switch between the two by using this formula, which is just subtraction. It's way easier, I think, than dealing with division. Um, so if I plug 7.7 .7 in for pH, pH plus my pOH equals 14. Really, I see that I'm subtracting. I would do 14 minus 7.7. .7. And that would tell me my pOH is 6.3. Now I know my pOH, that's different than my hydroxide concentration. But if I want to find my hydroxide concentration, I can plug my pOH in. So then I would say 10 to the negative, there's a negative sign there, 6.3. In my calculator, 10 to the negative 6.3. And it's coming out for me with a whole bunch of zeros, so I might want to switch it to scientific notation. So it would be 5.01 times 10 to the negative 7th. Um, and that would be my hydroxide concentration. If I then, for the same problem, wanted you to find the hydrogen ion concentration, I could plug this in here. Or I could go back to my pH and take 10 to the negative pH to get my hydrogen ion concentration. So for every question that I ask you, there are a bunch of correct paths, a, a bunch of different ways you can find the answer. Um, it's just a matter of making sure you know you're plugging in something to the right spot. So both of these formulas have pH and H plus in them. Um, if ever you plug into one and you don't know how to solve it, right? Let's say I was trying with the 7.7 .7 to find the H plus. Let's say I plugged in here. 7.7 .7 equals negative log of H plus. You can't divide by log. Log is not a number. It's a button on your calculator, but it's not a number. So if I plug it in like this and I'm confused, I probably plugged into the wrong one. So these formulas are opposites. If you plug into one and you don't know what to do with it, try the other. These formulas are also opposites in that same sense. Um, and then these formulas, notice they both have H and OH in them. One is P, one is without P. Um, but these will help you if you have a value that's about H and you want something about OH. One of these will help you go back and forth between the two. So essentially what I'm saying, don't give up. Try plugging things in somewhere. Um, and if you get confused, pop in and ask for help. Make sure you try these numbers that I did with this example in your calculator before you do the um, try problems. That way you know if your issue is not knowing how to use the calculator or not knowing how to plug things in.